Yeah, so I have this verse that I just, just want to read that's relative to prayer that challenges us relative to the idea of faith mm-hmm. and how prayer works and just a lot of different things. So let me read it to you. It's in Matthew 21, uh, verse 21. Truly I say to you, if you have faith and do not doubt, you will not only do what has been done to the fig tree, this is when the he cursed the fig tree and the fig tree withered, mm-hmm. uh, but even if you say to this mountain, be taken up and thrown into the sea, it will happen. And whatever you ask in prayer, you will receive if you have faith. Mm-hmm. Now, if there's ever been a verse in the Bible that that there's discussion around and confusion around, I think this verse does it because you know it does point to the faith, and it basically says if you have faith, then you can do whatever you want you know anything you ask will be answered Mm -hmm. and it is this verse where we hear you know a lot of the name it and claim it kind of Mm. uh, mentalities come out of Mm -hmm. which you know misses the mark so much from a standpoint of glorifying god and praying in humility and asking god to do what only he can do Uh, but you know i just want us to talk about this verse and dig into it just a little bit because it appears as if the faith is something that we have, you know, that we grow ourselves, that we somehow obtain ourselves on our own. If we can go out and gather up enough of it, then we can do whatever we want. And Mm -hmm. so that's, you know, I don't think that's how it works. And so I just want to get your thoughts on it. Let's just kind of have a little bit of a conversation around that verse. Okay. So faith and prayer. There's so much to say here. I'll start with this. I believe it's in Hebrews. The Bible says, that which does not proceed from faith is sin. Do I have that right? I believe you do. What I see there is this strong contrast. There is faith and there is sin. So when the Bible says praying with faith... I understand that also to mean praying in a way that is not sinful. If you to pray in faith, I believe that there's more to it than just to believe that what you're praying for is going to come to pass, although that is a part of it. You also have to consider faith in whom, and you already alluded to knowing who it is that you're praying to. Mm -hmm. So the prayer of faith is... I believe that idea encapsulates really all of the teachings on prayer because a heart that is faithful to God, that has faith in God, does not ask for frivolous things. Now, when I say frivolous, the things can be very small. But what I mean by that is rather things that satisfy the carnal man that make provision for the flesh. So that's one thing to say about faith. The other thing that I see about prayer is we, we, we get it backwards so easily because what we like to do knowing that faith is what gives our prayers efficacy is we then like to make faith this unattainable thing such that anytime you pray if it doesn't come to pass well of course the answer is well you just didn't have enough faith Mm -hmm. so then the question becomes how much faith is enough faith and for many people the answer to that is a lot of faith (laughs) right more faith than you have basically is the answer and I resist that on two grounds. First of all, the Bible says that if you have the faith of a mustard seed, you will move mountains. Well, if you're praying in the first place, then I think it's it's probably the case that you have some faith, mm-hmm. right? Otherwise, why would you be praying? So I don't I don't like this idea of setting this unattainable goal. And I think that the other thing you do when you set that unattainable goal is you put the ball too much in man's court and 
basically say, if, if you would just be good enough, mm -hmm. then God would answer your prayers. And then that, that gives you grounds for boasting when the prayer, if the prayer is answered. Uh, and then the final thing that I'll say about that is faith is given by God. Mm -hmm. Faith is not something that we conjure up ourselves even to begin with. Exactly. So I'll, uh, there's more to say about faith and prayer, but I'll, I'll let you talk there. Well, I just want to say, you know, one thing there specifically uh, that I have seen that is unfortunate that it should never happen in the church, and that is condemning someone for a lack of faith and putting yourself on a pedestal because I've got all the faith and you don't have any, you know, mm -hmm. that kind of a, I mean, there's, there's zero biblical support for that kind of an attitude. If that's, and unfortunately I've, I've seen it. So, you know, it's all, as you said, you know, uh, the, that faith is a gift of God. And, you know, Paul says, if it's a gift from God, why should we be boasting in it? You know, talking about spiritual gifts in general. And so that needs to be the focus. You know, it really, sh our prayer should be like the, the guy who came to Jesus and said, Lord, I believe, but help my unbelief. Right. Right. I mean, that should be the mentality. You know, we, we know, God, I don't have enough faith to move this mountain, but I do believe that you are the one capable of moving the mountain, so strengthen my faith. And I think, therefore, faith does proceed from God and is a gift from God, and that, that should be our understanding of it. Uh, by the way, that, that if anything, I looked up while you were talking, you know, uh, if it's not of faith, it's sin. That's actually in Romans chapter 14. And I knew it. You, <laughs> I, I knew as soon as I said it, I said, that's, that's not right. That was somewhere else. Yeah, but that you were correct as far as your quote, just uh, the reference was off. But if anybody wants to call you out on that or, or look that one up. so Yeah, friendly reminder to the viewers to watch the whole video or listen to the whole podcast <laughs> before you comment. Uh, so, you know, I still want to come back to this verse because it says anything that you ask in prayer you will receive if you have faith and of course we know that we can't take a verse and pull it out and just let it stand alone we need to take the whole bible uh as a as a whole and put this into the cotex of the other passages in the bible uh, so uh, it's not just a if you have enough faith you can ask for a million dollars and god's going to give it to you it, it's that's not what this verse is saying. Uh, you know, one thing that I think we that helped me with this is that when he says, if you say to this mountain, be taken up and thrown into the sea, when we pray, we are admitting our inability. And what we're basically saying is, God, I see a mountain of circumstances around me that I cannot get over. And... I am asking you to take this mountain of circumstances and throw them into the sea uh, so that what my need is can be met. And, you know, I can say from my own personal experience, when we have uh, encountered situations that we had no way to control, uh, you know, oftentimes, and maybe this is a point we should make in prayer, I have been guilty of saying, God, if you would just do this, if you would <laughs> move this thing over here and move this over here, that would create some room to come through in the middle. What I have learned is not to do that because God has a plan that so far exceeds my own ability. If I could logic it out like that, mm -hmm. I could, you know, maybe make it happen on my own. Mm -hmm. God always has a better plan and the circumstances that are the mountain in front of us, you know, it, it, for some reason we read this and we think, okay, I'm going to pray and Mount Rainier is going to be thrown out into the Pacific Ocean. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it, think in a little bit more spiritual terms than that. It's the, the, the circumstances and the situations that we see no way out of. It might as well be a physical mountain, right. you know. Uh, right. And I think if we think about it in term, those terms, it will enable us to pray and understand that God can change those circumstances if we put our faith and trust in Him. Mm -hmm. Sure. And as we say this, 
what we don't want to do is is make the verse conditional upon something that the verse is not conditional upon. Sure. So I don't ever want to be the one to say when the Bible says anything that, well, what it really means is this small subset of things. Right. When it says anything, it means anything. And can a prayer cause a mountain to be thrown into the sea? Yes. However, especially in, in our modern times, usually the things that stand in our way are not physical mountains. And sometimes the things that do stand in our way are easier to move than physical mountains. Sometimes they're harder to move than physical mountains. Regardless, God can move them. It's, I'm just saying that it's unlikely that someone would, would pray for some kind of dramatic display sure. like that. However, I think that the key to this passage is, as I mentioned earlier, the prayer of faith. Anything that you ask in faith, you will receive. If you pray in faith, then you will not ask for just anything. You see what I'm saying there? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So the, if there is any, any limitation to be placed on that is the limitation that is already implicit in the statement. And that is the limitation of the prayer that's made in faith. Mm-hmm.